Chair Espinoza, uh, Chair uh, Commissioner Ramirez, Commissioner Cade, Commissioner D. and Celentino are all here. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the April 12th City of Springfield License Commission meeting. Um, call the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. Um, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the March 22nd, 2023 um, City of Springfield License Commission hearing. Did um, all commissioners have an opportunity to review, to read and, and um, review the minutes? Yes. Yes. Any questions or corrections? No. No. Okay, then I make a motion to um, accept the minutes from the March 22nd, 2023 License Commission meeting. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Um, I'd also like to take time to um, excuse um, Commissioner Singator. He will not be joining us today. Um, the first um, petition is a petition for farmer farmer winery license to sell at Farmer's Market for home fruit and wine located at 200 Trafton Street. Sir Arena parking lot in Forest Park, Lori Perkins, manager of record. Is Ms. Perkins here or um, someone here for um, Farmer's Winery? No? Okay. Um, I will come back to, to that petition. Um, the second petition is a petition for a transfer of license from Chestnut Street Package Inc. to 447 Sumner Inc. DBA Chestnut Package Store located at 492 Bridge Street, Talbin, Torben, Patel, Manager of Record. Who is here for Chestnut Package Store? Okay, this is a You're repeat on. of that. Hello. Hello. Present. Hi. How are you? Very good. Okay. So, um, you have um, is there? Are you represented by an attorney, or are you just representing yourself? Uh, we are representing ourselves. Okay. Okay. So you have a petition for transfer of license. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we are acquiring the uh, asset from uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed Gus. We are uh, Mohammed Gus. We are uh, buying the assets, and we will run the liquor store as is. I'm sorry. We are going to continue the operation as, as being it. operated at the current location. We are doing just going to continue to operate the way it is and she's the manager of record. The hours will be the same, the product will be the same. And uh, most of the product are kept in the back of the counter anyway, it's full serve, meaning customer will have to ask for the product and we will monitor the IDs and whatnot. Um, and um, Toro Ben, right, Patel? is the manager of record. No, we, we changed it to Raksha Gogri. We submitted paperwork there. Did they update it? That's why they continued last time. Okay. Um, Attorney Cole, um, do you have that change? I do not. Um, we still have Troban L. Patel, manager of record. Uh, we submitted the paperwork um, to Anna Nieves about uh, Raksha Gogri. That's why they made us continue last time. When did you submit that paperwork? Uh, uh, at least three weeks ago. Okay, just give me one moment. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, maybe we can pass this while I just do some quick uh, search and come back to this one. 
Okay, so we we will move on to um, another, and we'll come back to you. Okay. okay. No problem. Okay. Um, next petition for an all new alcohol package store seasonal license for pit stop fueling, DBA pit stop and fuel located at 736 740 Boston Road. Hardik Gogreen, manager of record. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you being represented by an attorney? They are. Uh, my name. My name is Seth Stratton. I'm with Fitzgerald Law. I'm here with my colleague, Kevin Hassett. Um, we represent um, Pit Stop Food and Fuel, Inc. Hash and Hardik Gogri are here with us this evening. Um, Hardik is the president, director, and manager of record with respect to this license. Uh, Hash Gogri, his father, is the treasurer and director of Pit Stop Food and Fuel. This is an application for a seasonal package store, all alcohol license. There is an existing beer and wine license at the premises. Uh, Hardik Gogri is the manager of record on that license. There have been, there have been no violations or license suspensions um, with respect to that license. Uh, Hash and Hardik uh, Gogri are involved with Prime Liquors on Liberty Street in Springfield as well. Uh, again, there have been no violations or suspensions of the license uh, at that facility. Uh, Pash Gogri is uh, an owner of Plaza Liquors in West Springfield. Hardik Gogri has not been involved in that operation. Um, Plaza Liquors did have one instance of an underage sale uh, during a sting operation by the West Springfield Police Department and received a one day suspension in connection um, with that violation. Uh, that's been the only instance um, with respect to um, Plaza Liquors in West Springfield with respect to which um, Hash Gogri uh, is involved. Uh, the reason we're here tonight uh, on, on this license is to add um, a seasonal all alcohol offering uh, at this premises. Uh, this would add an amenity to the existing customers. Uh, there's been a demand for liquor in addition to um, beer and wine at the location. Um, the uh, city of Springfield has determined that seasonal all alcohol licenses are available. Um, Pit Stop Food and Fuel has applied. Uh, this is important uh, to their continued operations and that the expected continued decrease in demand for gas and tobacco sales uh, impacts their uh, economics and they're looking to offer additional products to their customers and stay competitive. Um, we have appeared before the Pine Point Neighborhood Council, addressed questions and concern, uh, sorry, questions and concerns, and received a favorable recommendation in writing from Pine Point. Uh, we appeared before the planning board, uh, received a recommended approval by the Office of Planning and Economic Development to the planning board and ultimately uh, received a favorable vote uh, from the Springfield Planning Board. We are tonight requesting that the commission, uh, their, the commission's favorable consideration of this application. We are seeking a license, uh, a statute allows for the license seasonally to go from April 1 through January 15th. Um, ideally, we'd like to have that full period from April 1 to January 15th, um, but it also allows a more restricted period from April 1st to November 30, 30th, uh, which um, uh, we would be okay with as well. Uh, but again, um, encompassing the holiday season would be preferable. We're happy to address any questions or concerns regarding the application. Um, any questions from commissioners? I have a question. Did, did he, go around the neighbors and see what their opinions were on this uh, addition? Yes, um, extensive conversations with the neighborhood. Uh, we presented to the neighborhood council uh, and had a robust discussion. Uh, <laughs> there were concerns around, um, there was a, a number of members of the community who were very supportive. Um, there were concerns expressed about 
uh, traffic flow, um, you know, uh, children accessing um, liquor sales. We addressed um, those concerns uh, and cooperatively with the community and received a, a vote in favor uh, by the neighborhood council. So, uh, question, do we have a letter indicating that the neighborhood council was in favor uh, for the record? We do. Oh, we do, okay. Yes, um, I can read that into the record if you like. Yes, please. Um, March 29th, 2023, to whom it may concern, please let it be known that at the monthly meeting of the Pine Point Com Community Council, that attorney Seth Stratton represented the owner of Pit Stop Food and Fuel at 704 Boston Road, came before the council with a presentation requesting approval for a seasonal liquor license at that location. After much discussion of the matter, it was approved by a vote of four to three. Sincerely, Mary Colbert, treasurer of the Pine Point Community Council. Uh, the only thing that was not included in that letter was the time period. Uh, uh, is the council uh, is the neighborhood council aware of the dates that you're looking for? They are. Uh, we we discussed the time periods, um, the same that I discussed earlier today in this presentation, yep. the two available periods, um, and you know that we prefer the longer period, uh, but um, the that there's a shorter period available as well. Yeah. My only concern was that it was not listed in the neighborhood council's uh, letter uh, for favorability. Um, but anyway, uh, we can move forward. Attorney Stratton, what was the second? I wrote down April 1st to January 15th. What was the other date that you gave? April 1st through November 30th. April to November 30th. And um, I believe that's what you presented to the um, Pine Point Council. I, I was at that meeting. Um, yes, I think we, I think we actually um, inadvertently said May um, through no, through the end of November. Um, but on in retrospect, looking back at the statute, the availability does commence in April. Obviously, we're halfway through April at this point. But um, yes, that's that's correct. Um, I, I do recall also that um, they did ask what would happen to the alcohol that you'd have, in, you know, that they would have in the premises that is going to be completely removed from the store during the time that is not licensed. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Johnny, you have a question? Uh, no, I'm I'm good. Okay. So um I think that um for the commissioners, our decision would be to um you know if if we are going to approve this, um is it going to be April 1st to January 15th or is it April 1st to November 30th? My recommendation, uh, Madam Chair, is we do April 1st to November 30th. That would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how the commissioners feel, but. Is that what was presented to the Neighborhood Council, those specific dates? Yes. The, okay. well, well, like the attorney said, um, they had mentioned May right. to November 30th, okay. um, you know, later in November. Um, the April 1st to January 15th was not brought up. Not, okay. Okay. Um, Attorney Stratton, do you have any questions for us? No, I, I, um, I will, and I'm glad you clarified that. The, the request for the, the shorter date was based on an initial um, discussion with that my client had with the city indicating that that would be the available period. We subsequently looked at statute and realized there was a longer option, but I understand um, the commission's view based on the discussion of the original dates and um, 
perhaps there can be a future request for you know, uh, a longer period because the holiday period would certainly um, aid the business. But um, uh, but the initial request is is to have the license. So um, whatever the commission deems appropriate um, is will be well received by uh, Piss Out Food and Fuel. Okay. Um, Attorney Cade, would you like to make a motion? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair, that uh, petition for our all new alcohol package store seasonal license for Pit Stop Fuel Incorporated, DBA Pit Stop in Fuel, located at 736 740 Boston Road, uh, Hardick, Gorgie, Manager of Record, that this be approved for a date of April 1st through November, through November 30th. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay. Um, just as um, Commissioner Cade mentioned, perhaps in the future you can um, inquire about a change of um, date or an extension on date. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, good luck. Yep. Good luck. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Attorney Poe, um, are we are we all set to come back to um Chestnut Package Store? No, I'm still waiting to hear back from from Anna. If I if okay. I do, I will let you know. But as of right now, I cannot verify that. Um, okay. It's what appears on the agenda. And I don't know if we forgot to change it or not, but I need some verification. I don't have it. No problem. Okay. Um, let's go back to the um, petition for a farmer winery license to sell at farmer's market. Anybody here for the farmer's market? No, not yet. Okay, um, we will move on to petition for an alteration of premises for the Student Prince LLC DBA Student Prince located at 8 Fort Street, William Porter, manager of record. Who's I'm here? For... Hi. I am here. Hi, William. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Are you here by yourself or you're being represented by someone? Nope, by myself. By yourself, what can you tell us about these alterations? Um, well, similar to what's happened in the past couple of years with COVID and our ability to uh, move our operation outdoors and our liquor license to cover Fort Street, um, we are just looking for the same thing we've done in the past couple of years. Um, we've approached our neighbors. They seem to be uh, agreeable to this. And we don't consider Fort Street to be a major thoroughfare, considering we have School Street and Hampton Street that go down the same direction. Um, so we're just ready to um, be able to uh, operate the same way we've done the past couple of years with the COVID um, our, uh, alterca uh, alterations that we that we were able to do. We're just looking to do that once again this year. So that's temporary. Temporary. We're looking at. I understand that after this meeting, um, what, whatever the next steps would be, I understand there might be a waiting period of maybe 21 days to if there's anybody else that wanted to uh, challenge this. Um, so we're looking for whatever sometime in May to what we did uh, the past couple of years was the 1st of November when we would have the everything down and the street cleared for uh, as a public thoroughfare. Okay. Any questions from commissioners? Any community um, residents with questions or concerns? No. Okay. Then I will go ahead and um, make a motion to accept the petition for alteration of premises for student prints at LC. DBA student prints located at 8 4th Street, William Porter, manager of record for, um, and this is this should cover from May to November. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? 
Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay, good luck. Thank you so much. Come visit. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Um, we'll move on to um, petition for a new for a new annual GOP all alcohol license for St. Anthony's Masonite Catholic Church of Springfield, DBA the Cedars Banquet Hall, located at 375 Island Pond Road. Joanne Guardialucci, Guardialucci, manager of record. Um, who is here for the Cedar? I hear, I you're see on mute. some, you're, you're on, on mute. mute, you're muted. Can't hear you. This is when my sand language comes in handy. Okay, go, there you go. Good evening. <laughs> Fred Frangie for St. Anthony's, and I also have Joanne Gagliarducci here uh, as well. Okay. Um, if, are you representing yourself? We were representing St. Anthony's? Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, okay. Tell me what the plan is for um, Cedars. Uh, basically, what I want to capture is the theme that it's business as usual. Uh, we had a l liquor license beforehand. Uh, St. Anthony's Church uh, was founded and moved to Island Pond Road in uh, 1969. And then we and then we built this social hall later on that hosts weddings and all kinds of events, including a game night for the Smith and Wesson crew and so forth and we, we our license lapsed and since that time we've been doing a temporary license every time we have an event which is uh costly very expensive uh, and unfortunately we have to pass that on to the people that that come and use the hall and right now so it was business as usual as we'd like to get a a full full permit um and that's about that's about it uh the hall is connected to uh the church uh, it's it's used primarily by our uh, parishioners, but we also invite uh, other people and other groups and organizations. In fact, right now the Knights of Columbus are uh, holding an event uh, in in the in the hall right now, and uh, sometimes people want to partake in in refreshments, uh, nothing crazy, and uh, we don't go after midnight. And we don't go after midnight. And uh, we do have the blessing from the neighborhood council. Uh, I'm gonna be meeting with them again tonight, but they've already provided a letter to the Springfield uh, Planning Board uh, su supporting this, supporting us in this move. And um, right. right. And before we, we had a change and in, in incorporate, uh, we incorporated and that, that involved the bishop uh, being one of the directors, and that's another reason why we're moving now, and we have to get a new license. Um, is so, Ms. Joanne has been the manager of record all along. No, well, no, the manager of record was Jean Karam, and we've never had an incident in the twenty-five years that we've had a liquor license. Okay. Um, and can Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And tell him Gene's right here right now. Yeah, and Gene Karam's here. He just came in. He just stepped in. Right. So we're on premises for every event. Okay. Me and Gene are on premises every time we have an event that the bar needs to be opened. Not every event does the bar have to be open. Like the um, jail is coming tomorrow to do their graduation. There will be, you know, no bar for things like that. And just like weddings, uh, birthday parties, and those kind of things are the times we open the bar. It depends on what the client would like to do. If he don't want to, then we don't open the bar. We just serve soda. Um, and we don't go after midnight. There's no drinking after midnight. I make sure the bar closes and no alcohol after that. Unless it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> okay. So, so what is your experience? Have you been manager of record in the past? Oh, yes. You have. Can you tell yes. us about that? Um, well, I've been working in this business for 35, 40 years. I am SurfSafe certified and TIP certified, both TIP certifications. 
because there are two. I'm concessionaire as well as regular trip certification. Um, I've been a manager of a bar downtown on Worthington Street uh, for seven years. And I've worked in this business as 40 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you do know about, obviously, the tip certification, the um, yeah. IDs, the college mm -hmm. students getting a little right. creative with their, with their IDs. And, mm -hmm. you know, okay. Yeah. okay. I have a picture of all the, the fake IDs. And um, I, I go over them with our bartenders. And if they have a question, I'm here for every event. Okay. You know, you, if they have any uh, questions about that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Any questions from the commissioners? I, no, Madam Chair, I'd just like to add. Oh, go ahead, John. No, no. You, we might be on the same topic. So go right ahead, Andrew. <laughs> now, what I was going to say is that uh, I've been very familiar with uh, the Cedars. In fact, I just called maybe two or three uh, days ago to try to get a repass there. Uh, hello, how are you? Now, how I are you? <laughs> I see your face, but uh, since yeah. I've been in the neighborhood, I've never had any kind of uh, or seen any or heard of any incidents that have uh, happened at the Cedars. So uh, I think they are pretty much uh, okay in reference to all alcohol license. My question is that you indicated that you've passed that increase on to your customers. So if you receive this all alcohol license, will you give them a decrease uh, moving forward? No, we won't be charging that anymore because we'll have our own uh, like the alcohol license, we'll, which we will pay for out of the cedar. So there won't okay. be any charge to the customer. No. All right. That's good. No. All no. right. Thank you. Um, John? Well, maybe, Andrew, maybe I should have went first then. Um, because I do, I do see an email that was sent to us about some concern about the litter outside your facility through your dumpster area and all that. Uh, a neighbor has concerns about this. I guess you, it's been an ongoing issue. Can you please? Uh, First, I heard of it. So, uh, oh, hold on a minute. I. I Fred Franger here. I was at the planning board and we, we we discussed that and I thought and the message that I got, although I haven't seen the uh, I haven't seen that email. Um, and and I, I will say that this is the first that we we have heard of any kind of problems at all. But I thought the email, the way it was conveyed to me was that they were concerned that with an alcohol license, with a full liquor license, that there'd be an increase in trash. Um which would not be the case. Um, that's that's the way it was conveyed to me. Um, we have a dumpster out back. It's we have uh, two of them out back, um, and we have a we have a contract. I think we got a new contract now, right? Yeah, well, to have it was it. USA dumpster. Yes, yeah, and, and they, it's all fenced in. It's all fenced in. Uh, this is truly the first that that any one of us oh, yeah. uh, have have heard of this, um, and it's something that we would be bit vigilant about uh going no forward as we always are with respect to our grounds the email um, sent john would you like to read yeah. the email i will read uh it says here i am a neighbor of the rear of saint anthony's church i have only one issue with the approval of the liquor license as it stands now the church can't keep up with the litter near around their dumpster my concern is that this license will cause larger and more frequent event excavating the litter issue. My hope is that they can put thicker requirements on those that rent the hall when the function is complete. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we'd be, we're always vigilant about our grounds. We take great pride in our grounds and we will continue to be vigilant in our grounds. And as I had indicated before, uh, business as usual, uh, this this will not bump up uh, the trash at all. Uh, it'll be business as usual. Same amount of people, same amount of uh, rentals uh, with, with nothing more than that. So there wouldn't be an increase in trash and so forth. A uh, question, uh, does the dumpster abut uh, a resident behind no, the no, no, it's behind, uh, it's right behind the hall and the closest, the closest house to it is the, is the, is the priest rectory. 
there's no nobody behind us. Yeah, there's nobody. There's nobody behind us. The only thing yeah, that dumps. No, no houses. There's only woods and a bunch of arborvitaes that have been chewed up right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a fence uh, with the abutters on our right hand side. But I don't believe there's any trash or anything there. No. And I would say that's a good thousand to fifteen hundred yards away. Would you say that? Mm -hmm. oh, there's yeah. nobody near. Yeah, there's like fifteen hundred yards away. That that the closest house to the dumpster, which is hidden in the back and surrounded by a fence. But um, I'm not here to dispute this person or this neighbor. Uh, it's something that we will always be vigilant about, and we'll always make sure that it it's nice and clean and well kept. Okay, well, if I, my concern is if it's, you know, like you're saying, your, your, your neighbor is probably a thousand feet <laughs> from, from um, where you're at. And if trash is getting over that far, then it, it sounds like it's really a problem. Um, I, I will, however, mention that in the past, we have waited for licensees to go in front of the neighborhood council um, before um, they come to the to the license commission meeting. Um, what I can do is um, is continue this um, this meeting to or this petition to the um, to our next meeting. Do you know when the, your neighborhood council uh, is meeting? If, if I may, um, we we already got a letter from the neighborhood council supporting and blessing the whole the whole uh, application process. But on top of that, I am supposed to meet with them in five minutes, 10 minutes to uh, go over it again. Uh, I'm, they're, they're meeting tonight and they've provided me with uh, a little bit of wide openness in terms of uh, when they're gonna fit me in, but they've welcomed me to come in and speak to them tonight as well. Uh, just to- that approval letter. Yeah. Okay, um, but but, but uh, there is a le there is a letter on the file which 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 gives yeah supports I, us getting in. Okay, I have not seen the letter. Has any other of the commissioners seen the letter? Attorney Poe, have you seen the letter? I have not. No. Okay. Um, I, I think Miss Lori, are you a resident of the neighborhood? No, oh, I live on the line. Yep, she's I'm here from Iceland on the agenda. Oh, she's here oh from okay. Her. Okay. Um, so I think, I, I, I don't know, um, commissioners, um, what do you think? I think my concern is that we need to see that letter. We have to have that letter ourselves. Um, like I said, in the past, we have always waited to hear from the Neighborhood Council. Um, I, I think my suggestion would be to continue it to um, April. Um, I mean, we've already asked um, all the questions, so it should be pretty short um, if they do come back um, April 26th. My concern, uh, go ahead, who's talking? Is somebody saying anything? I, I just said oh. that, that, that's fine, that's fine. I can, okay. can, uh, can you tell me how to forward that and get it in front of the board? Um, you'd send it to Anna Nieves yeah. at the okay. office. Of, at the, yeah, right. Anna Nieves. Yes, I have her email. Okay. Yeah. Right. Once, you, once you send it to her, she will make sure that we receive it. Okay. okay. That's fair. Andrew, did you have a question? Uh, my only concern would have been uh, comments uh, would have been is that uh, I mean the seizures has been around for over thirty years. Uh, never had an incident, uh, and then we hear from one resident who's complaining about, you know, the trash, which everybody's concerns are valid. I understand that, but here's an entity who's been around for 30 years, never a problem about anything. Uh, no police, uh, you know, calling the police or anything like that. So, um, that Andy, was I I, I'm sorry, Andrew, but I don't see uh, that being the issue. Uh, I don't think the board is going to, the board would weigh on a person's concern about the trash or but granting uh, this place a license. I still think we need to see the recommendation from Pine Point because they are now asking for another license that their license has expired in the past. 
fine point. Um, and, uh, I, I, don't, I understand that. I understand yeah. that. So it's well, the it's same thing. thing. Yeah, it's the same thing that we received a letter of recommendation on pit stop. Uh, I think it's the same thing we should validate in waiting on getting a letter from Pine Point Council uh, on their recommendations or their concerns if they have any. Uh, yeah. But the uh, the trash situation, one complaint, it, I don't think it's, will weigh that much of a concern on this board. It doesn't weigh anything on my part. I just wanted to make it noted the, that there was a concern out there about the trash and they can uh, attend to it as as it be. Commissioner uh, Ramirez, I understand your position and I uh, understand uh, the Madam Chair's position as well, and I will accept that. The only thing is that I just want to be explicitly clear that we do not have to wait for a letter from the Neighborhood Council. You're we absolutely right. That. We can make yeah. our own decision. Yep. But I will definitely uh, concur with uh, Madam Chair. Anything else? No. I just I just want to I just want to clarify that um, we, I don't think the count it's not the Pine Point Council that uh, I'm going to tonight. It's uh, I think it's the East Forest Park. Park. Yeah. East Forest yeah. Park. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a We're different council. Yeah. Right. Park. That's that's what he meant. <laughs> okay. Oh no no. I just I just wanted to clarify any confusion. Yep. Okay. I want to make sure I want to make sure that I'm going to the right council. You're going to the right meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a motion? Andrew, you want to put one in? No. Well, I, I, go ahead, Andrew. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to put a motion in. Okay, so I'm I'll make a motion to continue the petition for a new annual GOP license all alcohol license for St. Anthony's. Um, church in Springfield, DBA, the Cedars Banquet Hall, located at 375 Island Pond Road. Um, and I didn't um, get the manager writing, write her name. Um, and that we continue it until April 26, 2023, our next meeting, pending the letter from um, the East Forest Park Neighborhood Council. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? No. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay. Um, so we will see you on the 26th of April, our next meeting. Okay. Thank same you. Yeah. Yes. Same okay. time. Should be Thank rather you. short. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. Very much. you. Okay, tonight. Yes, All right. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, we can go back to item number one. Lori okay. Perkins is here from the Farmer Winery License. I believe she was right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um petition for farmer winery license to sell at the farmer's market for home fruit wine located at 200 Trafton Street, Sir Arena, parking lot in Forest Park. Lori Perkins, manager of record. Hello. Hi. Hello. I was here when you roll called the floor, but I was on mute. So oh, too bad. I also sent a note through the chat. Is anybody managing the chat? Guess not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to keep a closer eye on that. Actually, actually, I'm managing the chat, but um, I, I saw you there, and that's why as soon as we got a break, I brought you back in. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I'm Lori from Home for Wine, and I think this will be our fourth year selling at the Forest Park um, Farmer's Market season. It runs from May 2nd to October 31st this year. And we haven't had any issues um, in the past. I thank you very much for allowing us to do it in the past and hope you will again this year. Um, I am up to date with my TIP certification. So um, as long as this COVID thing is over with, I would like to do tastings again there to offer it to the um, customers that come. It's just a one ounce tasting. So you are doing the tasting or you are not? I would like to if, like if to. it's allowed. You're not, 
Okay. Okay. Any questions from commissioners? No. Okay. Well, I do remember that this is your fourth year coming. <laughs> I think up. it was our fourth, yeah. Right. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to accept the petition for the farmer's winery license to sell at the farmer's market for home fruit wine located at 200 Trafton Street, Sir Arena, parking lot in Forest Park. Lori Perkin is manager of record. There, second. Second. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay, good luck. Thank you very much and have a great evening. You as well, thank you. You too. Um, Attorney Paul, where are we with? Um, with regard package. to uh, agenda item number uh, under new petitions number two, I have not heard back from Anna. I hate to do this, but I'm gonna ask that we ask them to come back to the April 26th meeting. Um, I just have no verification with regards to the new manager of record. Okay. Um, Ash? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, the, you hear what uh, Attorney Paul just said? I heard, yes. Okay, so we're going to ask that you come back for our next meeting in two weeks. Okay. We, could, we couldn't verify the, um, the, the change. Okay. Okay, I'll bring the record tomorrow and correct it so that we have it, okay? And I'll look, make sure that they see, get it correctly. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, so I make a motion that um, we continue to our April 26th um, meeting, the petition for transfer of license from Chestnut Street Package Inc. to 447 Sumner Inc. DBA Chestnut Package Store located at 492 Bridge Street. Tora Leben Patel, manager of record. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we move on to our pre-hearing conference. Um, actually, um, Attorney Poe, is it okay if we do our Section 77 hearing prior to the pre-hearing conference? It's your pleasure, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, why don't we move on to Section 77, Club Aquarius, located at 1271 State Street, Freddie Venegas, Manager of Records, Status of Your Business License. Mr. Venega, we can't hear you. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. How um, are you? Good. How are you? Good. So what is going on? We know Aquarius is no longer. Uh, I, I'm only doing private parties right now. Because when Anna called me, told me that it's been, it's been permanently closed. I'm like, it's not permanently closed. It is up for sale. We're almost done with the sale. Uh, April 27th is the closing date. Um, it's gotten pushed back twice. Um, the E21 inspection uh, has been taking a little bit longer than expected. Um, the plan all along was to, through you guys, move the liquor license over to Tim O'Tale's Grill, uh, 436 Boston Road. My aunt did sell that restaurant to another family uh, member and still the same process. I'm gonna be applying to transfer a license over there. Okay, so, but for now you are utilizing this license. Yeah, I'm okay. utilizing the license still. I'm not open how we were before. Okay. Um, publicly, the weekly nights, I I was over it, done with it. So um, okay. it's more just private events right now. Okay. Okay, any questions from? Commissioners? No. No. Okay. Um, all right. So all I can say is, um, you know, if you choose to, you know, that you're going to close, you make that decision. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do your private parties anymore. Um, and you're not going to transfer, then, you know, you just um, let us know. Okay. Um, no, what your plan is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Anna was uh, walking me through the steps uh, to transfer. So 
Okay, great, great. So you're in touch with the um the licensed um office. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um I think that's it. We don't have to make a motion for 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 section 77, correct? No. Okay. No. Well, thank you for coming and have a good great. night. Great, you as well. Take it easy, thank everyone. Bye. Okay. Good night. Um, okay, so pre-hearing conference, um, we do have an, on the first item, we have um, a request for, um, to be continued until May 10th. Did everyone receive the um, email, commissioners? Yes. Yes, okay. So um, I will make a motion to continue the um, GEO 195 Pine Street DBA Summit Package Store located at 195 Pine Street, um, Majid Nazem, manager of record incident of 221.23, selling alcohol to minor, um, a motion to, to continue to May 10th, 2023. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner, oh, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay, we move on to the next pre-hearing conference and that's Tyler John Inc. DBA TJ's Wine and Spirits located at 1716 Boston Road. Joyce Wilson, manager of record, incident of February 21st, 2023, selling alcohol to a minor. Um, who is here for um, TJ's Wine and Spirits? Uh, Sam Wilson. Are you here by yourself, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Okay. Uh, Barry? Can you tell us a little bit as to what happened on February 21st, 2023? Yes. Yeah, so okay. okay. There was a citywide fine check. Uh, between four and eight, a 19 year old cadet went in there and was able to buy a six pack of twisted tea uh, without being asked for ID. Um, we went in, identified the, the clerk that sold it, and uh, that's really that's it. Okay. Mr. Wilson, is that to your recollection correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, can you tell us um, what happened? What have what have you done to remedy this situation? Well, the first thing, this the uh, the woman who had did this, she had been with me for four years, uh, so I was really kind of shocked that it actually happened because I've never had any issues with her before. Um, what we've done is she is tip certified. Um, I did not fire this lady because she was with me for four years already, and I've never had a problem with her. Uh, she has two kids that she's raising on her own. Uh, she's a reliable worker. Uh, normally, my policy would have been that they would have been instantly terminated on a situation like that, but I suspended her for a week. She's TIP certified, but I made her take the TIP certification over again also. And what we're also doing is we are adding where it requires them to enter a birth date into all alcohol sales now, including tobacco and lottery. And is that going to be a verbal or are, are you, do they have to check the ID? Well, they have to check the ID to enter it in to the, the system. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I do see that um, in 2015, there was an incident. In 2017, there was an incident. And also 2018 was an incident. And I know it's been a long time between 2018 and 2023. Um, we just, we wanna make sure that this, you know, it doesn't continue to happen. 
I want to make sure it doesn't happen again also. Right. Any, so, any, sorry, any questions from the commissioners? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, this is a pre-hearing conference. So do we uh, do anything in rel relative to the violation uh, at the pre-hearing conference or wait to the final hearing? But since okay. he's stipulating that it did happen, uh, right. is there right. a final hearing? Attorney Paul. Normally, I believe we've been waiting to the final hearing. Um, no? No. Okay. Then I believe that we can and um, address the matter here at the pre-hearing conference. Okay. So you did stipulate that it did happen. Yes. Um, okay. So, um, so this would fall under the five day suspension to I, my suggestion would be two to be served um, and three to be held in advance for a for, for year. Are there any commissioners? I think uh, since he hasn't had a violation in some time, Madam Chair, my recommendation okay. is uh, one day suspension. One uh, day suspension? Yes, uh, that would be my recommendation. And four to be held? Four to be held in advance. Okay. For a, year, for a year. Okay. Okay. Would you like to make that motion? Uh, yes. Uh, wait, hold on a second. I'll have it in front of me uh, that I can do that. Uh, like to make a motion that we, Madam Chair, I don't even have it in front of me. Uh, okay. If you could read, let me see. Pre hearing okay. that's the third third item. That's the second item. Oh, second item. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we suspend, uh, we make a, a the violation for a one day suspension, four days to be held in the balance abeyance for Tyler John Incorporated, DBA, TJ's Wine and Spirits located at 1716 Boston Road, George Wilson Manager Record, incident of 221 23. Selling of alcohol to a minor. Second. Okay. okay. Um, I think we forgot one thing, and that is um, the date that is going to be the suspension is going to be served. Um, so we usually do that weekend, in the the weekend following the meeting. So um, commissioners, um, would you you know what day would you like? to agree on that Friday the 14th or Saturday the 15th? Andrew, you put in the motion, what day do you think? <laughs> okay, what uh, day with the, is uh, probably more significant? Uh, the Saturday? Uh, uh, okay, uh, so yeah. I would recommend the Saturday, whatever day Saturday. it is. Yes, to add to that motion, Madam Chair. So can, um, you're adding to your motion that um, that one day suspension be be served on April fifteenth, two thousand twenty-three. That's correct. Okay. Is there a second? Yes, second. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Wilson. We yes. hope not to see you again, because if you come back within a year, then you will have to serve the four days plus anything else. I understand that. Okay. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Wilson, you will receive uh, an email from the commission, from the license um, office um, with a sign. Mm -hmm. that you have to put on on your door that states the reason when you're going to be closed and the reason why okay, okay. Yep. all right thank you have a good night you as well thanks the third item um the third third pre-hearing is um rick ang inc dba racing mart located at 685 sumner avenue race abisa Manager of record for the incident of um, 
selling alcohol to a minor on February 21st, 2023. Who is here for raising marks? We can't hear you, Attorney Ruth. Are you Hello? on your computer? No, I'm on my phone. Can you hear me now? No. I can hear you, but I cannot hear um, your attorney. Yep. Um, attorney, um, attorney Rook is trying to unmute. I believe he's just about there. There, there, we, go. there we go. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairperson and fellow members of the commission. For the record, my name is Attorney Tom Rook, and I am representing the uh, petitioner here. And we are going to concede and acknowledge the violation and would like to address you with respect to the disposition of the matter. Okay. And um, Barry, I assume same thing happened from having read the, the report, you sent the cadet in to purchase? Yes, same, same cadet. I, I think this one happened a little earlier in the night and same thing, a six pack of twisted tea. Okay. Okay. Um, and I do see the on the um, violation history. There's a, a violation back in um, 2015, 2016, and um, nothing until now, 2023. Um, I think that's that correct. Was, I'm sorry. That's that correct. is correct. We don't we don't dispute that. Okay. Okay. Um, since just like attorney uh, attorney Cade, <laughs> Commissioner Cade mentioned before, I do this at every meeting. <laughs> just like Commissioner Cade mentioned before, because um, it's it's been a long time since you've had a um, a violation. We're just going to go ahead and do the five day suspension um, if the commission approves. Um, and, I'm sorry. Can we just yeah. get some uh, what measures they've taken uh, since that time? I think that's the one step we did skip. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, what um, measures have you taken to make sure that this doesn't happen again? What happened that day? Well, Madam Commissioner, the, uh, the manager who's with us um, hired a local neighbor who lives in the neighborhood uh, to work as a clerk, and unfortunately, uh, he was only there for 10 days and had not yet been SIP certified, uh, which all of their employees are SIP certified, and he sold the, the alcohol to an underage woman. Um, we don't dispute that. Um, my client was being a nice person, hiring someone in the neighborhood to give my job. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this is what happens. So we're asking you to acknowledge that these things happened. Uh, he was terminated immediately after the incident was revealed to him. Uh, no longer works for him. And all employees are SIP certified and I don't think this will happen again. Okay. Are there any particular measures that you are taking with the other employees that are there? All other employees um, are TIP certified, have been TIP certified, and they're not, yeah, all other employees are TIP certified. Okay. So I but guess that's it, all I can say. Okay. Um, but even sometimes when, when employees are tip certified, they get a little lax sometimes and, you know, either forget or just don't check on, you know, the, the IDs. So my suggestion is that it doesn't matter, um, you know, who it is that, you know, and whether you are a tip certified or not, that you remind your employees all the time that they have to check sure. the IDs. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. Okay. Any um, questions from the commissioners? Um, I just have one for Barry. 
Barry, do you recall if after you guys went in after the fact, did anyone ask about uh, tip certification on the individual who sold the uh, alcohol? We did. Uh, I asked him if he was tip certified, and he asked what that was. Um, I explained it to him, and he said no. And I think he did. Uh, you know, I knew he he was a local kid, and I'm I'm pretty sure he told me he was a new employee. Okay. So, on that note, I do have and Johnny. I don't know if you were going to say something else in regards no. to that. Okay. So my question is. Um, to the owner, why would you have someone sell if they weren't tip certified yet? Why why did you take that that risk? So so what we what we have actually we have uh, a scanner. Every customer that com comes in, we scan their ID and he knows that. So I honestly don't know what got into it. He just acted on his completely out of his own, own volition and he decided to enter the date of birth manually. I mean, we, we it's either they enter a, a date of birth manually or they scan an ID. And 99% of the time we scan IDs, we take the IDs. So sometimes there's some like very old people that come in and they don't have their IDs. We take their date of birth and enter it and, and assist them. So we, we have a scanner for that. So we avoid uh, situations like we, uh, we scan everybody's IDs. We, we want to make sure we're not selling anybody underage. So for this particular employee, I don't know what came into his mind to decide and just ask the lady for her age, which he should not have done that at all. And they all know that. And they're always, as you said before, they've verbally reminded every day that you must ask and see the, the customer. So that was very uh, this uh, employee that had done that, and uh, I'm making sure no, no one does that. No one does any manual entries. They know that they have to have their ID and the ID scans. We've had that in place since 2015, 2016 with scanning IDs. That is why, I mean, this is. You know, scan the ID and make sure it belongs to the customer in front of you. And that's it. There's no other thing to do except manual entries and cases where there are older gentlemen or ladies uh, at the counter trying to buy. Okay. Any other questions from the commissioners? Madam, Madam Chair, I think Commissioner Ramirez makes a great point that this is just a uh, a little more serious than our previous uh, person that came before the commission is that uh, the individual was not uh, TIP certified and didn't know anything about TIP certification. Right. I agree. I agree with you. But, uh, Commissioner, I would just remind you that this employee was only employed for one week. So he was sort of in the process of being processed through the you know the program but not yet i mr uh, attorney rook uh, I, I get what you're saying but he was asked what is are you tip tip certified and the answer was <clears throat> very correct me if i'm wrong no or or what is that so if he was in the process he would at least have some acknowledgement and some recognition what tip certification is so with that, I, I, I'm sorry, and I just, that doesn't jive with me on that part. I'm sorry, no, Mr. Rook, but- You're it, right. You're right. I, I don't disagree with you. So um, I don't know. Uh, if you, if, the, if they're conceding on the situation that was in front of them on this violation, I would like to put a motion of two days uh suspension five days in advance uh serve friday and saturday of this coming friday and saturday uh, for one year and i see in the past they did have a lengthy suspension 
So I think the two days will should be honored if you guys accept it. Just one question. Uh, Based upon the predecessor case that just appeared before you, I would ask you to hold that in abeyance. Uh, I'm gonna, I want to. I would like to hold three days in advance, two That's days correct. to be served. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a total of five days suspension, two to be served, and three to be held. Yes. And those are to be served this weekend. And you said um, April 14th, Friday, and April 15th, Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Is that correct? Okay. Is there, is there a second? Second. second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Okay. Um, you will receive um, a, an email from the licensed commission office um, with a piece of paper that is going to explain what happened and why you are closed for those two days. Make sure that that is posted on you. your door. Okay. Window. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, next item is new business 2023 seasonal license approval. Springfield Lodge of the Elks located at 440 Rear Tiffany Street Clubhouse Cafe at LC located at 617 Dwight. Attorney Paul, do you have um, anything on the um, 2023 seasonal license? I do not. I think, isn't this the same license that last year went the entire season and we never got around to it? I, I'm not sure. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Can you, no? I think it's, it's, we're talking about two different licenses, right? We're talking about one for the Springfield Lodge of the Elks and the other one for Clubhouse Cafe. The, this is two different things. Not, two, not there's two different things. Okay, they weren't um, labeled or numbered. Um, so, so I I don't have anything in front of me in regards to the license. To, to are we just looking to approve the seasonal license? I, they do they come work. in front of us every year. My understanding for this, and I right. think this is for them to be able to sell or distribute alcohol in their back in their back um, picnic area or something like that. If yeah. anyone, Andrew, is that correct? Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, and, uh, like like uh, John indicated, normally someone's here. Right. Okay, so do we, um, do we go ahead and continue it to our next meeting? <clears throat> Madam, Madam Chair, I would suggest that we do that. Uh, continue it to the April 26th meeting because I don't think you have seen the licenses or, or anything from either one of these groups and um, we'll bring it back on the 26th. Okay, so I make a motion that we continue the 20... I'm so sorry. Sorry, my work it's linked to my computer. <laughs> Um, I make a motion that we continue the 2023 seasonal license approval to our next meeting, April 26th. Is there a second? Second. second. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Now, um, do we want to continue the Springfield Lodge if no one is here? Um, do we continue? Do you, Attorney Paul, you suggest we continue the Springfield Lodge to our next meeting as well? Yes. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to continue the Springfield Lodge of Elks located at 440 Rear Tiffany Street Clubhouse Cafe LLC located at 617 Dwight Road to our next meeting on April 26, 2023. Is there a second? Second. second. 
Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Okay, now we have our incident reports. Did everyone receive their incident reports? Yep. Yes. Okay. Everybody have an opportunity to read them? Yep. Um, yes. Okay. So um, the first one is the zone for incident of um, March 11th, 2023. And that was... Um, it looks like a fight outside of um, the club, but nothing um, was going on inside. Am I correct, Barry? From what I read in the report, I, I believe there was a male arrested. Um, he had gotten in, or he got into some sort of dispute inside. He was escorted out by the staff. As he left, he assaulted uh, one of the employees there. He ran down the street. Um, the employee flagged down a cruiser that was driving by in the area and uh around the same time or shortly thereafter the guy ran back towards the door and i believe tried to get back in assaulted two more employees and then was placed under arrest by the officer okay um i did make a motion we take no action second commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Um, second is Benton Package incident of 325. Actually, we have Benton. I don't have. I don't have Benton Package. Do, do, do you? You have it. I have pot bellies and um, winged madness. I think Benton might have been added or something. But we don't have it. I didn't see it either. Right. This is the same usual guy that's trespassed from all the pack. The one that got arrested at Frank's, I don't know how many times last year. Right. His, his new spot is now Benton Park Patch, Package Store. <laughs> <laughs> they trust passed him and um, he got arrested since then he's been arrested there again so um i, I know you guys probably can't because it's not you don't have it in front of you but i, I do barry i find it, <laughs> I <Okay. found> it. <laughs> thank you <laughs> so i make a motion for um we take no action for, yep. for a bended package there's a second second yep. commissioner Cade. yes Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Um, we have pot bellies. I was hoping never to hear that name again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, disorderly conduct for um, pot bellies, but I guess everything happened outside. This was a, a funny one because the guy was still there but refused to, to obey what the officer was telling him. Um, so I make a motion, we take no action. Second. 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 Um, okay, um, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner um, D'Angelo Antonio? Yes. Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa, yes. Um, and we have wing madness. Um, for the um, incident of March 18th shooting in the parking lot. Gary, what happened? So uh, apparently they had some kind of event there. I guess they do like a Fish Friday event. Um, so after closing in the parking lot, um, apparently th there's some sort of disturbance uh, and in some order, a male shot and another male is run over by a car. Um, there's three calls to report it. I believe, uh, I don't have the report in front of me, but I did speak to three females that were all there. Um, nothing happened inside. Uh, the manager there later confirmed nothing happened inside. 
uh, he wasn't even aware that anything had happened outside um, until officers arrived later on in the evening. Um, the male who was shot transported was transported to the hospital um, and he had a gun on him that so it's speaking to the the one of the females that was there in outside um she said she never even saw a fight she just heard cars peeling out and she heard gunshots and then she saw a guy on the ground that's the guy they had been hit by the car he didn't even stay there he got up and left so when the officers got there the first time everyone was gone uh, there's like a small crowd further away like they had moved further away in the parking lot. It wasn't until the victim showed up at the hospital, they went back and then they found shell casings. Um, I guess if you're familiar with that plaza, like it would be in front of Wig Madness, but further in the parking lot. So not, he has cameras as well, but they only cover basically like the sidewalk and the fire lane. So you do see people kind of loitering and there's Looks like at one point there's almost a fight, like they're holding one guy back and then everyone goes off screen. And about five or 10 minutes later, you can see some people, they run back towards his door trying to get back in, you know, presumably when the, the shots were fired. Um, the manager did tell me that he's trying to add cameras that will cover further into the parking lot. I just don't know how that, because obviously he, his landlord would have to allow him to put them further out in, in, in the lot, which I'm not sure that'll happen. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I don't know. I'm just going to put this out there. Um, should we have um, the person from Wind Madness, um, Madness come and talk to us a little bit more about cameras or should we just not take any action? I don't. I don't think we need to because um, with the covering with the license is for inside a building, maybe right in front, uh, um, out in that parking lot. It's a large parking lot. It is. Where do you where do you stop? You right. know, so you know, you go all the way up front. You run into Channel Forty. You know, uh, stop and shop. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, I think my opinion is no action on uh, that part. Um, I don't see where Wing Magnus were at any mm -hmm. fault or negligence. Um, yeah, I agree, John. And uh, we don't even know if the person had a gun within the Wing, wing Magnus or not. Uh, so I would agree with you. Yep. Okay. So oh, make okay. a. I make a motion to take no action for the um, wind magnet madness um, incident of March 18th, 2023. Second. Commissioner Kay. Yes. Commissioner D'Angelo Antonio. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Um, our next one is an um, entertainment district, and we don't we don't hear the inter district so i believe we are ready to adjourn if um if every if everyone agrees no <laughs> questions concerns <laughs> just want to go home <laughs> okay well i make a motion to adjourn at 6 48 p.m thank you second, second. commissioner k yes commissioner d'angelo antonio yes Commissioner Ramirez? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.